Welcome to today's Triple Z. The Triple Z podcast is a daily recording that you can use to help you fall asleep each night. Just turn down the volume, lay back, relax, and enjoy as you fall asleep. Today we are traveling back in time to 1960 and learning about the Bell Labs electronic phone switching system. In the days before cell phones and even touch tone dialing, the telephone company was experimenting with using computers to manage phone calls. Here we learn about Bell Labs first ever phone exchange that they built using a computer to manage the phone calls. If you enjoy our program, Please be sure to write us a review on your podcast platform and share us with a friend. You both might sleep just a little better at night. Our website is triple Z, that's three Z's dot media. You can also like and share our content on Facebook or our Instagram account ZZZ Media Podcast. Music for today's episode was provided by The Sleep Channel on Spotify. The Electronic Switching System General Description Strafey H. Dean Switching Systems Development Department Bell Telephone Laboratories, Incorporated Whippany, New Jersey Printed in the United States of America April 1960 Preface An electronic switching system employs principles and techniques that are new to telephony. The fundamental objectives are the same as for any dial telephone system, namely, to enable customers to make their calls quickly, accurately, and economically. Achieving these objectives by electronic rather than by electromechanical means, however, involves the use of certain new devices that in many instances replace the familiar relays and other components of previous switching systems. The electronic switching system ESS in Morris, Illinois is a laboratory's trial installation of the first bell system all electronic central office to provide customers with dial telephone service. As with any new system, this trial presents many problems. One of these is the question of how to give maintenance people an understanding of the new concepts introduced. The ESS can diagnose most of its own troubles and can identify the sources of trouble. But it still needs a maintenance staff well trained in the basic principles of the system. This book constitutes part of the educational material required for training such a staff. It is intended to be used as the text for the ESS plant training courses to be given by the Illinois Bell Telephone Company. The study of this book will prepare the maintenance craftsmen for on-the-job training in the new method of simplified maintenance used in the ESS. This book gives a general description of the ESS and tells how electronic switching resembles and how it differs from electromechanical switching. It describes the apparatus elements used and shows how they operate individually and together. It explains the respective functions and operations of the major components and of the power equipment. It traces the progress of calls through the system telling how the customer's dialed instructions are analyzed and carried out. In short, this book presents a perspective of the principles, equipment, and operation of electronic switching. The material in this book is presented in the order considered most suitable for learning and understanding how ESS works. Chapter 1, An Introduction to the Morris Electronic Switching System gives a broad overall view of the ESS installed in Morris. It describes features and arrangements that are common to most of the equipment in the system. Chapter 2, Method of Operation, tells how various calls are handled by tracing their progress through the system and describing briefly the functions of the circuit units encountered. The chapters that follow give more details about the operation of separate circuit units 
as well as information on power supplies and maintenance. The new technical terms that are introduced and explained in the course of the text are summarized and again defined in the appendix, which constitutes a glossary. The electronic switching system was developed through the cooperation of many people whose contributions are recognized elsewhere. Appropriate acknowledgement should also be made to those who prepared this book. Some of the material here is original, the rest was gathered from numerous sources. All of it was compiled under the supervision of George H. Duncrack, whose co-authors included Robert E. Eberhardt and Darwin T. Hosmonson of the Illinois Bell Telephone Company, as well as Francis J. Heron, John N. Mackesy, John V. Penny, Frederick J. Rail, and Earl R. Williams, all of Bell Telephone Laboratories. The authors are in turn indebted to those anonymous scientists, engineers, and other counselors whose penetrating and constructive comments added to the accuracy of the text. The typography, printing, and binding were handled by Kenneth M. Collins. The ESS emblem on the title page was based on a design suggested by Sai Xuan Xiang. It was selected from many ingenious devices proposed. It is hoped that the general description of the ESS presented in this book will form the background for a more detailed study of electronic switching. This volume itself is an integral portion of the training program for the Morris trial installation. Your comments on the book will be appreciated and will help in the preparation of training material for electronic switching systems of the future. Clarence A. Lovell, Director of Switching, The Electronic Switching System, Chapter 1, An Introduction to the Morris Electronic Switching System. The first Bell System All-Electronic Central Office to provide customers with dial telephone service has been installed to serve as part of the Whitney 2 Exchange in Morris, Illinois. It is a trial installation, furnishing service initially to certain individual and group service business stations as well as individual, two-party, and eight-party residential lines. Morris is about 65 miles southwest of Chicago, as shown on Figure 1-1. It was chosen for the trial of the first electronic switching system, hereafter ESS, because it is an isolated local central office that is nevertheless large enough to try out the high-speed control and non-metallic switching network features of the ESS. Also. There is no apparent need of developing, at this time, all the service features required for a larger office. The Illinois Bell Telephone Company decided to replace the manual system in Morris by a number 5 crossbar system in 1959. The crossbar system, which will be in operation before the ESS is installed, will handle all the traffic in Morris before and after the ESS trial. During the trial, some 600 customer lines will be transferred to the ESS. A summary of these lines, with the services to be provided, is given in Table 1-1. The ESS is designed to handle most of the kinds of customer services currently furnished in Morris. The features provided in the Morris ESS were dictated by the telephone needs of the community and by the characteristics of the electronic switching system. Those features are summarized in Table 1-2. All traffic to and from the ESS in Morris will be carried over trunks connecting with either the Morris 3CL switchboard or the Morris No. 5 crossbar system. The trunking plan is shown in Figure 12 on page 4. The trunk numbering plan is described in chapter 3 of this book, Switching Networks. Miscellaneous service trunks and trunk groups are discussed in chapter 1-1, Trunks. 1.1 The ESS compared with No. 5 Crossbar. 
Like the number 5 crossbar system, the electronic switching system is based on the concept of common control. The number 5 crossbar, however, uses mainly electromechanical devices and several common control circuits, while the ESS uses chiefly new electronic and solid state devices with only one common control circuit. Both systems are in a sense special purpose computers. Their special purpose is the switching of telephone calls between customers. The main difference between the two systems is in the method by which they are controlled. The number 5 crossbar rises wired relay logic while the ESS uses stored photographic logic. In other words, the crossbar system operates according to the way its relays are wired but the ESS operates according to written instructions stored on photographic plates. A change in the written instructions will change the machine operation without any change in wiring. The chief advantages the ESS has over other switching systems are its high speed of operation, its need for very few moving parts, and its longer trouble-free operating life. Less equipment is required, which also means less building space. We expect that these and other advantages will make it possible in the future to give better service to our customers at lower cost. The ESS uses only a single central control because it performs repetitive operations at very high speeds, many times faster than is possible with electromechanical devices which are in turn faster than human abilities. In a manual system, several operators are required to handle a number of calls at one time. The ESS operation, however, is so rapid that it can take care of all calls one at a time without perceptible delay. At any instant, one and only one central control operation is taking place in the ESS but each operation is carried out at a speed that is many times faster than any previous method can achieve. The high speed of operation of the ESS is attained by the use of a number of new devices and techniques. These are summarized in Table 1-3. 1. Two functions of the major components. The major components of the ESS are shown schematically in Figure 1-3. Their functions are described briefly in this section, following chapters explain their operation in more detail. The drawing numbers of the components and the connecting circuits are shown on key sheet ES1A00001. The terminology used in this book is summarized in the appendix which constitutes a glossary of technical terms applying to the electronic switching system. 1.2.1 The Scanner If you think of the ESS as a robot operator, then the scanner is its eyes and ears. With a human operator, her eyes and ears detect information on switchboard lines and trunks. This it passes on to her brain. So with the SS, the scanner detects the voltage condition of lines and trunks. This it passes on to the central control, the robot's brain. The central control must be able to detect the condition at any time of any line or trunk in the office. To do this, periodically and at high speeds, the scanner looks at each line. By information from the scanner and that stored in other parts of the system, the central control can determine that a customer has begun to originate a call, that a call is in progress, or that the call has been disconnected. The scanner checks the voltage of each line 10 times a second, that is, every 100 milliseconds. When a request for service is detected, the scanner is further directed to the line every 10 milliseconds, 100 times a second. This is necessary in order to recognize changes in line voltage resulting from dial pulses. The dials used in Morris operate at 20 pulses per second or 20 pps. 
after the connection has been set up to the called customer and no more dial pulsing is expected, the 10 millisecond scan is stopped. The scanner detects an answer by the called line in the regular 100 millisecond scan. When it does, the ringing of the called line is stopped by the release of the connection from the ringing switch. Leads from the scanner are connected to two resistors in the loop circuit of each ESS line as indicated in figure 1-4. When a customer originates a call, the closing of the switch hook causes current to flow in the line loop. The current passes through these resistors where a DC voltage drop is developed. The voltage disappears whenever the line current is interrupted. This happens during dial pulsing and again at the end of a call when the switch hook opens the line. The scanner input circuit detects the presence or absence of this voltage and passes this information to the central control. This gives the central control the supervisory information it needs to process the call. The scanner input circuit likewise detects the presence or absence of a signal voltage on a trunk. 1.2.2 The Signal Distributor The signal distributor can be compared to the hands of a telephone operator. The operator inserts the plug of a cord circuit into the switchboard jack of a trunk and then dials to complete the connection. Likewise. The signal distributor, which acts as the hands of a robot operator, connects to a trunk and generates the dial pulses of the called number. The signal distributor's job is opposite to that of the scanner. The scanner gathers information for the central control. The signal distributor distributes information it obtains from the central control. The signal distributor, SD, consists of a large number of flip-flops, two-state electronic circuits. These are either set, operated, or reset, released, by directions from the central control. The SD is used to distribute signals to one of a number of circuits, such as trunk circuits. To these slow-speed circuits, it sends signals from the high-speed central control. The high-speed signals from the central control are received and translated in the signal distributor. From here, they are retransmitted at a speed slow enough to operate relays or other devices used on trunks for signal control purposes. For example, the signal distributor is used to operate a relay in an outgoing trunk circuit to outpulse to a distant office. The signal distributor, among other functions, generates dial pulses on a trunk circuit for transmission to other switching systems. In generating these pulses, the signal distributor receives instructions from the central control at the dial pulse rate. These instructions tell the signal distributor to open or close the trunk loop or to start or stop a particular pulse. This function of the signal distributor is similar to that of a crossbar sender. 1.2.3 The Barrier Grid Store The Barrier Grid Store, or BGS, is the short-term or temporary erasable memory of the ESS. It is used to record the status of each call as it progresses through the system. This is the unit that, among other functions, remembers the number dialed by the calling customer. It can be compared to a slate or a memory is a medium for retaining information. Sector 1 Two functions of the major components 9 Scratch pad on which notes are jotted down for future reference. After the notes have been used, the note is erased. The major component of the barrier grid store is the barrier grid tube, BGT, which is an electrostatic storage tube. This tube is built somewhat like a television tube with an electron gun at one end and a target at the other. The electron gun generates and shoots a pencil-like beam of electrons toward the target. 
The principal difference between the barrier grid tube and the TV tube is in the target. The target of the TV tube is a phosphor screen of various sizes up to 30 inches in diameter. The target of the barrier grid tube is a piece of mica about 2 inches in diameter. This screen or target area is divided into smaller areas or spots. At each of these spots or memory cells, it is possible to store an electrical charge. Thus, each spot can record one bit of information. There are four BGSs in Morris, and each tube, or BGT, has a capacity of 16,384 separate bits. Groups of spots in the BGT record information about each call as it progresses through the system. These groups of spots are known as registers. They work a lot like the relay registers in the number 5 crossbar system. Some of these spots in the register take the place of certain relays in the trunk circuits of existing systems. For this reason, the trunk circuits in the ESS are relatively simple. 1.2.4 The Flying Spot Store The Flying Spot Store, or FSS, is the second memory component in the system. It is the long-term or semi-permanent memory of the ESS. In this memory is stored the entire office service program, the office test program, and the translation data necessary to convert a directory number to an equipment location to give the type of ringing, etc. In comparison, a manual telephone system has part of the above information stored in the operator's memory and part in written records. The records provide the reference material that supplements the operator's memory. In the number 5 crossbar switching system, the office program is stored in the wiring of the marker and the translation functions are handled by the number group. The term bit of information is taken from the language of computer designers. A bit is a unit in a binary numbering system. It is always a single digit, either 0 or 1. A bit may be indicated by one of two possible conditions. For example, a bit may be represented by an electrical charge or no electrical charge at a specified position on an electrostatic plate or by an opaque or a transparent spot on a photographic plate. 10 An Introduction to the Morris ESS Chapter 1 The operation of a manual system depends on human memory and reasoning power. In present-day automatic switching systems, the memory and reasoning are wired in and the action is performed by electromechanical devices. In place of this human and wired-in memory, the memory media of the ESS are photographic plates the coded information placed on the plates is called the stored program. It appears as an array of transparent and opaque areas on the photographic plate. There are two flying spot stores provided in Morris. Each one contains about two carat million storage spots. From the analogy with the manual and the number five crossbar systems, an important difference in the ESS is evident. In the manual system, the records can be changed. In the number 5 crossbar system, wiring can be altered to make changes. But in the ESS, new photographic plates are prepared and inserted in the ESS. The FSS focuses a spot of light from the face of a cathode ray tube on the plates through a system of lenses. The light from one spot on the screen of the cathode ray tube is imaged simultaneously on several photographic plates. From these, it is imaged on a corresponding number of photomultiplier tubes. The output from each photomultiplier tube makes up one bit of information. Consequently, a parallel set of bits is read out of the plates simultaneously for each location on the face of the cathode ray tube. The sets of bits read out of the plates are relayed to the central control for use as needed. 
1.2.5 The Switching Networks The unit in the ESS that provides the connections among customer lines and trunks is called the switching network. There are marked similarities between this network and the number 5 crossbar switching network. The talking paths through both systems networks are connected by means of cross points and several stages of switching. However, the ESS network uses gas tube cross points instead of metallic and a single wire talking path in place of the conventional two wire circuit. The ESS switching network consists of the concentration, distribution and signal switching networks. The controls for the networks are in the concentration and distribution markers, as shown on figure 1-3. On command, they can set up or take down connections between trunks or between lines and trunks. Photomultiplier tubes are light sensing tubes in which the initial photoemission current is multiplied many times before being extracted at the anode. In the ESS, the switching network operates under the direction of the central control. However, the choice of call paths through the network is selected by the network itself. The markers apply the voltage to the proper network terminals to operate the cross points. Only one side of a talking or ringing connection is switched in the switching networks. The other side uses a common ground return path See figure 15. This simplifies switching and halves the number of cross points used in a connection. But transformers must be used to match the two wire lines and trunks to the single wire circuits in the sections of the switching networks. The matching transformers prevent the use of 20 cycle ringing through the networks. This means that the ringing signal used in the number 5 crossbar system won't work in the ESS. Therefore, a new telephone ringing arrangement using a tone ringer instead of a bell is used in the ESS. Instead of the usual 20 cycle ringing, a tone signal is sent through the switching network over the line to call a customer. The ringing tone is applied through a concentrator-like network called the Signal Switching Network. This network, Figure 1-3 is 12. An Introduction to the Morris ESS Chapter 1 Controlled by the Concentration Marker Two connections are set up through the switching network whenever a line is being rung. One of these is for sending tone ringing to the called customer, the other is for sending audible ringing tone to the calling customer. 1.2.6 The Central Control The Central Control CC, is the brains of the ESS. It makes all decisions that control the flow of orders to the various parts of the system. The Morris ESS has two central controls. One is an active service, while the other is serving as a monitor or check ready to take over at any time. Upon orders from the Flying Spot store, the central control directs the operation of the barrier grid store, scanner, distribution marker, concentration marker, signal distributor, and Flying Spot store. For example, the central control directs the scanner in inspecting the present condition of a line. By comparing this condition with the last recorded condition in the BGS, the central control knows whether or not a change has taken place, it can now decide what to do next. On the basis of such decisions, different program addresses are sent to the ESS. This is the place where instructions are received so that appropriate changes are made in the system. 1.2.7 The Standby Transfer Certain critical equipment components in the ESS are duplicated to ensure trouble-free telephone service. When one unit of such equipment is in use, a duplicate unit is in reserve or standby condition. 
If a failure occurs in the working or active equipment, that equipment is immediately taken out of service and the standby equipment is substituted. Part of this transfer operation is performed by the standby transfer circuit. The standby transfer ST circuit includes the equipment for the switching, matching, and marginal voltage test functions of the central control. It also includes miscellaneous apparatus for CC, such as the master clock and the FSS control circuit. The major functions of the standby transfer ST are the switching functions. These control the transfer of the regular and standby equipment on orders from the central control. This transfer takes place between the central control and the following components. 1.2.8 The Administration Center The Administration Center AC, is used to extract information describing the performance of the office and to control certain aspects of its operation. It includes the manual controls for the system, a maintenance and traffic recorder, and certain automatic test equipment. The broad functions of the administration center are shown in Table 1-4. The maintenance information gathered by the ESS is typed out on a teletypewriter controlled by the system. After the system analyzes the trouble, the teletypewriter prints the result in a code. This code is interpreted with the aid of a maintenance manual or dictionary which points out the location and number type of the packages involved. The teletypewriter also records traffic data. In addition, it is used to send input signals to the ESS to request test or translation information from the system. For example, to take a unit out of service for maintenance or repair, the order requesting this action is fed into the system by typing it on the teletypewriter. Two teletypewriter machines are provided. One is used to monitor the system's operation, the other is used for recording data for traffic studies. If one of the machines becomes inoperative, the second machine will carry on the normal functions of both machines. The information that indicates call conditions to the PBX attendant can be in the form of voice announcements or lamp signals. Both methods will be tried in Morris to determine customer preference. Since the announcement system is used on attended customer group services, it will be explained more fully in Chapter 16. 1. Three Equipment Arrangements The location of the ESS cabinets in the Morris Central Office is shown in Figure 1-6. The cabinets are placed to simplify the cabling between them. Thus the power cabinets are placed adjacent to their associated equipment cabinets wherever possible. Also, cabinets that are closely related in operation are placed together. For example, the cabinet containing the concentration and distribution markers is located adjacent to the cabinet containing the switching networks. The administration center and the switching networks are located in a central spot so that you can get to them easily. The cabinets are placed in rows with a 3 foot 6 inch aisle between them. 1.3.1 Cabinet Design the ESS uses new types of cabinets and new arrangements for mounting equipment. These are quite different from any used in previous telephone switching systems. The cabinets shown in Figure 1-7 are the smaller of the two types used. They are made of steel and aluminum and have an attractive bland gray vinyl finish. Each cabinet is 7 feet high, 2 feet deep and 28 inches wide. This permits the use of standard 23-inch mounting plates. These cabinets have magnetically latched aluminum hinge doors on the front and rear. 
the equipment is mounted in both the front and rear to reduce floor space and to shorten leads between large numbers of packages. Local cabinet wiring is in the center. You get to the equipment wiring by swinging open hinged bays. The equipment in the front of the cabinets is mounted on these bays. The 230 volt AC power leads and the various DC and pulse leads are carried overhead in the tops of the cabinets. The 110 volt AC power leads for the appliance receptacles are carried in the ducts in the cabinet base. The cabinets shown in figure 18 are the larger of the two types used. These have the same construction and finish as the smaller cabinets, only the size is different. Each cabinet is 7 feet high, 3 feet deep, and 12 feet wide, and is arranged for both 16 inch and 31 inch mounting plates. The markers and switching networks are contained in these cabinets. These cabinets are equipped with aluminum doors hinged on the rear of the cabinets. Sliding glass doors are used on the front of the cabinet housing the switching network equipment. Vinyl finished aluminum sliding doors are used on the front of the cabinet housing the marker equipment. Both cabinets are equipped with fluorescent lighting in the front bays. This is required for the proper functioning of the gas diode elements. As in the smaller cabinets, the equipment is mounted on both front and rear to reduce lead lengths and floor space. Hinged bays are provided only on the rear of the cabinets containing the markers. Overhead ducts carry the wiring across the aisles. For the benefit of temperature sensitive electronic equipment, conditioned air is blown upward from the base of the cabinets. It passes the circuit packages in the front and rear and goes out into the room through grills in the top. Separate adjustable grills near the base in both front and rear of each cabinet direct the air from a common supply. The amount of air is regulated according to the amount of heat to be dissipated in each area. The front and rear of each cabinet is stamped with its unit abbreviation and number designation. These cabinet designations are listed in figure 13. In addition, bay numbers are stamped on the front and rear, the even numbers are on the front bays and the odd numbers are on the rear bays. Each cabinet has apparatus designation charts mounted on the inside of the doors to help you identify and locate the equipment. Since the larger 12-foot cabinets have sliding doors on the front, the apparatus designation charts are kept in a book located on the side of each cabinet. A copy of all charts is available at the administration center. Some of the cabinets have duplicate equipment. This is identified by color coding, 1.3.2 wiring and local cabling. Surface wiring is used throughout all cabinets. Local cable is also required, however, particularly to connect equipment on the swinging bays with the stationary parts of the cabinets. The local cables contain single conductors of various gauge sizes, small diameter coaxial cable, and twisted pairs. Solderless wrapped connections and small gauge surface wiring allow an orderly arrangement of wiring. 1. For apparatus elements. Many of the apparatus elements in the ESS are solid state semiconductor devices such as diodes and transistors. A large number of gas diodes and electron tubes are also used. These, along with resistors, capacitors, and transformers, make up the bulk of the circuitry in the ESS. Most of the apparatus is mounted on plug-in wiring boards called circuit packages. 18 An Introduction to the Morris ESS Chapter 1 1.4.1 circuit packages. 
The smaller components of the circuits used in the ESS are mounted on circuit packages. Three varieties of such packages are shown in Figure 1-9. Package A is a narrow phenol fiber board, 1.6 inches wide by 7 inches long, which is used with small functional circuits. On this type of board are mounted the small components with one or two transistors mounted in holes near the outer end. Leads from these transistors are attached to printed conductors that run directly to the end of the board. These conductors are connected with the rest of the circuit pattern through a special shorting connector. This interconnects the conductors on both sides of the board. When you remove this connector, the transistor is isolated so that you can make electrical checks without removing the transistor from the board. This type of narrow package is an amplifier used in the central control, scanner, and signal distributor and to a lesser extent in other cabinets. About 70% of the packages are of this type. These packages are mounted in connectors having code teeth. This permits only packages with coded slots to be inserted. Package B is larger, 3.6 inches by 9 inches. This type of package is used in electron tube circuits. As many as 66 components may be mounted on one of these boards. This package needs two connectors of the type used with the smaller package. As with the smaller package, the contact end is slot coded so that you cannot insert the package into the wrong connector. The circuit in this package is a flip-flop used in the storage systems. Such a package is representative of most packages in the Barrier Grid Store and the Flying Spot Store. Package C varies in size up to 3.3 inches by 10 inches. It is used for mounting more and larger components in a given mounting space. The board mounts up to 14 terminals. These meet with wires strung between molded supports. The wires are gold plated and the terminals are palladium coated to assure low resistance and noise free contacts. The circuit in this kind of package is a junction circuit. It is the type of package most commonly used in the switching network. 1.4.2 connectors. With the exception of the 14 terminal package mentioned above, the packages plug into connectors of a special design. These connectors have 12 connections and is a circuit between the two central stages of the switching network. A flip-flop is a device capable of assuming one of two stable states and storing a bit of information. A relay or knife switch does a similar job. Figure 1-9 Typical circuit packages they are used singly for the narrow packages and in pairs for the wider packages. The spring contacts and mating conductors are gold plated. This assures low contact resistance. To avoid errors in replacing packages, the connectors contain code teeth. Thus, only those packages that have code slots in the corresponding positions can be inserted. 1.4.3 Locating Packages An important advantage of the connector and package design philosophy is that you can readily locate individual connectors or packages. This is because they are mounted on a coordinate basis as illustrated in Figure 110. The location of a mounting plate in a cabinet is indicated by a three-digit number. The first digit is the number of the bay and the other two digits show the location of the mounting plate in that bay. For example, if the front of a cabinet is designated bay 0, the mounting plates on it are prefixed by a 0 and the numbers marked on the frame 00 through 31 give the plate location. 
The rear of this cabinet is designated Bay 1 and all of its mounting plate locations 00 through 32 are prefixed by a 1. The connectors have their location stamped on the package supporting bar, see figure 110. They are designated by letter from left to right, A through Y and A through AF, omitting the letters I, O, S, and Z. This gives a maximum of 28 connector locations. The connector has 12 terminals, two vertical rows of six terminals each for wire wrapping. Looking at the wiring side, these terminals are numbered one through six from the bottom up and left L or right R. With this method of designation, any terminal in the cabinet may be identified. Both vacuum and gas filled electron tubes are used in the ESS. Gas tubes are used to a greater extent than vacuum tubes. The vacuum tubes used in the BGS and the ESS are quite complex in their construction. They are described in the chapters covering these stores. The use of gas tubes in the ESS is described below. Gas tubes are used mainly in the switching networks. They are used in the following manners. 1. As cross point elements in the main distribution network and line concentrator units. 2. In the selector to set up and release the talking connections. 3. In the propagator to maintain the switching margins. 4. In the juncture units at the center of the main distribution network. Figure 111 gas diode cross point element gas diode cross point elements the transmission path through the switching network has no metallic contacting elements like those in crossbar switches instead each cross point is a two element gas tube or gas diode the construction is illustrated in figure 111 in these tubes, the gas breaks down when sufficient voltage is applied across the electrodes. An electrical path is set up through this gaseous discharge. The speech current and the control signals for the connection are transmitted over this path. The diode has small amplification properties at talking frequencies. This makes up for transmission losses elsewhere in the switching network.